Two days ago, I embarked on my very first yarn dyeing adventure. If you're curious to see how this absolute beginner did, stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cletus and I aim to bring you guys fun, informative, and entertaining videos all about knitting. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you can follow along on all my yarn adventures. A few weeks ago, one of my friends asked if I was interested in trying my hand at dyeing yarn, and I was like, Duh. My friend lives on one of the outlying islands of Hong Kong, Peng Chao. So me and my friend decided to make a day out of it, have a little adventure, and try dyeing some yarn. And I'll be bringing you guys along. Now, I am no expert and neither of us are professionals, so please don't take this video as kind of like a how-to, more of just like a vlog style, follow me along in my adventure, and to check out how this absolute beginner explores, plays, and makes mistakes. Of which, there were tons. Before we got started, my friend soaked the yarn in a mordant of alum and cream of tartar overnight. Now, I had no idea what this meant, but apparently it helps open up the yarn and act as a fixative so the dye will take up nicely. We bought this yarn off of the website yarnundyed.eu. I got a set of 5 100g fingering weight yarn made out of 75% superwash merino, 15% mulberry silk, and 10% cashmere. Now, I know this might seem really expensive and luxurious for someone who is literally dying for the first time, but it honestly wasn't too expensive and I've never knit with cashmere silk before, so I took this opportunity to try something new. Overall, I spent around 45 pounds. We got a little discount because we bulk bought between a bunch of us. Next, I had to choose what colors I wanted to dye. Now, I read somewhere that it's always very helpful to kind of have an inspirational image that you want to base your set off of. So I chose this image that I took at the back of a cruise ship where I worked and lived for nine months. I remember just staring out for hours and hours, admiring the beautiful blues and turquoise of the sea, mixing with the white sea foam created by the engine. I just love that color scheme and I could stare at it forever. And just to interject here a little bit, I know we should be using gloves, however we did run out and we couldn't source anymore, so we made sure to be as careful as we can with not touching the dyes and washing our hands along the way. We also did this entire process outdoors so we didn't wear masks or ventilators. So I wanted to dye a fade set. So first I thought it was a good idea to dye all five skeins in varying blues. To achieve this, we wanted to put all the skeins into the pot and pull them out at different time intervals. Now, I was a little bit nervous as it was my first time and all, so I decided to start with three skeins first. And I'm so lucky that we chose to do that because even though we left some in there longer than the others, they all kind of came out looking the same. <laughs> so after that, we decided to take out half the dye, setting it aside in case we needed it later and diluting the pot with more water. That was our first mistake because we didn't measure everything precisely and now the dye solution was way too light. And followed quickly by a second mistake was that we thought it was a good idea just to pour the solution we set aside earlier directly onto the yarn in a smaller bowl. And as you can see here, it left a very, very kind of tie-dye patchy effect. Hindsight is 2020, and I was very lucky that I was managed to save it by just dunking the entire skein back into the diluted solution, evening out everything. This gave us three skeins of darker blue and two skeins of lighter blue. At this point, we managed to achieve a very semi-solid and tonal blues, which I loved. My favorite thing about hand-dyed yarn and indie dyers is that every single skein is different and every single movement and decision that a dyer makes results in a unique colorway. From here, I wanted to make skeins one and two darker, so I chose this beautiful mossy green and decided to give kettle dyeing a shot. Kettle dyeing is where you pour the yarn over into the yarn in different locations, resulting in a variegation effect. Now, an excellent tip given to me by Trey Liz was that the more water you had in the pot, the less harsh and contrasting the effect. That's because the water will help diffuse the dye outwards, resulting in less contrast and harsh lines. Now, I chose to use more water instead of less slash no water because you can see how I messed up earlier with that blue patchy skein. This resulted in a beautiful variegation of greens and blues that I am obsessed with. I then repeated that exact same process with skein 2 with a weaker green solution and skein 4 with some of the leftover blue dye that we had from the very beginning, leaving skeins 3 and 5 as it was. Now, you would think that for an absolute beginner, I should be happy with where I am and quit while I'm ahead, but nope. <laughs> I really, really wanted to try another technique called speckling. First, we tried to use this little sieve to distribute the dye on top of the skein, but soon discovered that it was just way easier to sprinkle it with our fingers. It was all well and good until 
for some reason, don't ask me why, I don't know, I decided to get a little spray bottle and spritz water on top of the skein. Now this obviously diffused and melted the dye. So instead of very well-defined little speckles, I basically just added more variegation, which I don't hate actually, so I'm counting it as another happy accident. We don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. So I chose to sprinkle the first skein with black, the second skein with that deep mossy green, leaving the third skein alone, and sprinkling the fourth skein with some of the original blue, and leaving the fifth skein alone as well. I wanted each skein to carry elements of the previous skein to help them all fade together. If you're interested in fading or gradient knitting, I have a separate video called Fading 101 that you can check out. When I finally was happy with the effect and decided to quit while I was ahead, we wrapped the babies up into plastic and put them in the steamer for 10 minutes. We did this because we couldn't dye the yarn in hot water, so by steaming the skeins, the heat actually helps fix the dye onto the yarn. After my babies had a nice long relaxing steam, we unwrapped them and soaked them for a final time in a solution of water and fabric softener. Then I took my babies home, left them on my balcony for two days to dry. Here are the final results. Overall, I am so happy with the final results, especially with it being my very first time. Could I have done more research? Could I have been safer? Could I have measured everything and had a definitive plan going into it? Yes, of course. Duh. But knitting and dyeing yarn is an art form, so I really wanted to just go in there with an open mind, open brain, and, and just play. And it was so much fun. So question of the day, and I do really need your help with this, what should I knit these guys into? I love them so much, but I honestly don't have a project in mind yet. So please let me know any designers or ideas that you have. I hope you guys had fun watching my little adventure into yarn dyeing. Perhaps some of you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made. And if any of you do choose to dye your own yarn, please tag me on Instagram at Cletus Tries Knitting. I would love to see them all. If you found any value in this video, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you can follow me on all my knitting and yarn adventures. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of this video and hopefully I will see you guys again next week. Bye!